Hello. Welcome Hello. in everyone. Hello. 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 Good day. Hi, JD. Uh, hi, Ace. <laughs> hi, Set. Hi. Hi, Danger. Hi, Daz. Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Do we sound okay? What's up? What's up, guys? Audio says hello. Is that good or bad, Rowdy? It sounds good. Everybody speak. Set says everyone be. Everybody speak. Speak. We are speaking, speak. I suppose. Speak. Hello. I play Stardew since an egg didn't invite for Father Man's collab with DD. Have fun with Stardew Days. Everyone sounds good. Hi, Brad. Welcome back to DD, everyone. Last week we did not have DD, so this week uh, we will probably be confused, and that's why we'll do the recap. But number one, of course, as usual, let's go down the line so everyone can introduce themselves. JD. Introduce yourself and do a little recap on your character. Hi, my name is Jay Dario. Most people just call me JD. Uh, I technically stream. <laughs> I'm a shrimp YouTuber. I'm just a silly, goofy guy. I like art, video games, roguelites, tabletop. Uh, I'm playing a rogue furbolg named Zephyr. He's a little stubborn. He's a little... <laughs> uh -huh. He's a little... Yeah, he's a little stubborn, but he he gets the the party where they need to get going. So I'll leave it at that. You sure about that? Okay, get yeah, your turn. Hundred percent sure. Hi, I'm Galentius, short for Galley. Um, oh, I am. Is that right? Yeah, Galentius is short for Galley. Anyways, I am Puko's roommate, and oh. yeah. Uh, I do play games here and there, however, I work a lot, so usually I'm kind of just dead. Um, but yeah, I try to stream when I can, and I am playing a character named Gordon Antheus, who is a wannabe wizard. Uh, he really sucks at it, but uh, he's just kind of there for the ride. He talks kind of slow like this, but you know. He's a pretty alright guy sometimes. Alright, and Ace. Hi, I'm Emo Ace. I'm you can call me Ace. Um, I'm a metal V singer that streams and I make videos on YouTube. I do challenge runs like Pokemon Nuzlocks, Master Duel challenges, and I cover metal songs. Um, so I'm playing Master Wayug. Um, who who is legally distinct from a certain um, character in mm -hmm. a certain DreamWorks film um series film series uh <laughs> but yeah um i'm i'm a bit of a um uh how do how do i say this um yes i'm based off of shrek um <laughs> <laughs> let's just put it at that i'm based off of shrek no <laughs> i'm I, i'm a bit um uh, aloof you could say um and you know, I I speak in parables and um, may or may not have uh, pissed off the queen last time. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, let's get a recap of the last session. Um, let, let's let's piece together everyone's um, you know memory from two weeks ago. You know, what do you guys remember? <laughs> So, I think we started off by waking up in the palace. Mm -hmm. We were greeted by Deuce, he gave us some breakfast, and then we said our goodbyes to the queen and her her circle. And then, I think we went to John Mulaney's stall first. There he gave yeah. us... What did he give us? Oh, he gave us a code or like a cipher for the message we got from Turnip. But raspberry juice on it. Yeah, it had some raspberry juice on it. It was a little um. faded, so we couldn't really use it. So we went around looking for someone who might be able to decipher it. Uh, we ended up at the Adventures Guild. We picked up a quest to help a warlock lady get some water from a magical waterfall. I believe her name was Naya? Naya? We also went to a library and we met a man named Professor Worm. 
Worm. Worm. Worm. <laughs> and he promised, or he offered to help us use the, find out or look into the decipher or the cipher code. And then we went off on our adventure. We boarded the boat back to the mainland. I think that's everything, unless anyone else remembers. That's yeah. basically it. Yeah. All right. And now that we got the recap, yeah, back I forgot about into... Worm. That was nice. <laughs> Did you write down Worm at all in your notes? Yeah. I remember I, I was on my laptop. <laughs> Oh yeah, huh? I lost all my notes and I had notes in the laptop and then now I'm back on these notes. So oh, dear. how could you forget about that encounter? It was so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, last session we ended the session with you guys, of course, you know, picking up the quest and then you guys heading off to the ferry. Um where you guys paid about like half the cost of what it took for you guys to actually get to the capital. Um, so, you know, were you swindled? Were you scammed? Are you getting a discount yes. for some reason? Uh, who knows? I mean, well, I mean, it's up to <laughs> your discretion, I guess. But you guys are bored upon, you know, the little fairy back. Um, why are my notes all weird? Yes, currently you guys are aboard the ferry it's you know it's kind of like the exact same thing as you guys use to get onto the capital um it's a little different that's a little different and the captain is uh, not not a male it's a female this time so there are different people and um, you know on, on this ferry at least and you know there's other patrons on the ferry and um at the moment it is a lot later in the day, the sun's uh, about to get down a little bit. So by the time you guys get to the shore, the moon will probably be just starting to show. Um, uh, scene change. I always forget to change the background. <laughs> scene change. Whoa, it's so nighttime. Wait, do I want to do this one? Let's do this one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting darker. But would you guys like uh, you know, spend some time discussing your game plan with amongst each other. Uh, perhaps looking over everything you guys have, or maps, or, you know, places you need to go, um, etc, etc. Or anything else you guys want to talk to, talk about amongst yourselves? Yes. You see, my friends, words and names are not the way. It can't define the absolute. It's better that you look within, hold your tongue, and just be mute. So I think we should go down the river and follow that path, but Wayug's idea also sounded pretty cool. Also, if you guys would like to describe the maps you guys have to our audience, because I'm not showing them crap, and feel free to. <laughs> so Zephyr is holding the map that we got from Naya, uh, the island is in the shape of an orange with a river going through the main island. Along the river, there's a couple symbols. What seems to be some kind of smoked instrument. <laughs> there's also a harp. It's very interesting way to describe that. <laughs> what, what else is it? I don't know how else to describe that. <laughs> how would Gordon and Wei you describe that? <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna go with what you said. <laughs> <laughs> and then further south of the river, there's a sword and an apple, which we have come to know is a town. I do not remember the name though. Xcar. Xcar. And then even south of that is where we're headed to, the waterfall, which is marked by a question mark on the map. I just the apple on X car has a butt. Yes, it's very plump. <laughs> <laughs> you just noticed <laughs> what? Oh yeah, I just noticed that the island is in the shape of an orange. No way. <laughs> I, just, I just noticed that. 
<laughs> that we landed in Orange Dale <laughs> for our first city. Conspiracy? Mm -hmm. What a kalinky dink. <laughs> Yeah. I never said I was the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> so Zephyr is still holding the map and he's showing it to Gordon and Wave and he's like, is there anywhere you guys want to head to? Any spots you are you think are worth checking out? I still have a key for the apple. I think and we should look within ourselves. Oh. Inside your shell. No, that's not what I meant. Oh. I look in your show all the time. I, I think we uh. should look at the map. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty interesting, guys. <laughs> yeah. I have an apple key, and there's an apple place. You know? That's like one plus two. Wait, which is? <laughs> The key goes in that apple crack. So, sounds like we're heading down the river. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, if, if we're heading down the river, we might as well stop by these other two symbols, see what's over there in that area. I don't think Naya told us anything about those two. Well, we didn't ask. Yeah, maybe we should have. <laughs> <laughs> we tend not to do that. <laughs> and, and therefore, my friends, it is truly great man dwells on what is real and not what is on the surface, on the fruit and not the flower. Therefore, <laughs> accept the one and reject the other. That is the words. Isn't that an actual quote? <laughs> From <Kung Fu Panda. laughs> I, uh, what's Kung Fu Panda? <laughs> I think it's past everybody's bedtime. It was getting a little loopy. <laughs> oh. Oh. Another story to tell. Oh. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, I would. How about you? Zephyr. Mm, Zephyr looks around. Is there anything else on the berry? Um. Anything of interest? <laughs> No, I mean, there's just like, you know, people there, you know, some adventurers, some regular folk, just, you know, the usual bunch you see around the capital. Everyone's just chilling. Some people are taking a quick nap before they get on shore. Uh, but yeah, the sun is setting right now. You guys are about maybe a little halfway over to um, the main island. With everyone in be occupied in their own conversations that Zephyr's kind of forced to stay with Wart Gordon and Wayuk, so he agrees to listen to the story. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, well, things are easier to control while things are quiet. Things are easier to plan far in advance. Things break easier when they are still brittle. Things are easier hid when they are still small. Now, plant problems before they arise, and blah 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 blah. blah, blah. <laughs> and is just like slowly nodding off to sleep. <laughs> Would anyone else like to do anything on the ship before you guys land? Zephyr is fast asleep, so yeah. Gordon, where you? Gordon is listening to Ayuk. Uh, blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> the master seeks no possessions. She learns by unlearning. As she is able to understand all things, this gives her the ability to help all of creation. The end. Well, why wait? While Wayuk is um, telling his little story, you know, an actual crowd starts starts to gather around you guys. You know, they're like nodding, they're really invested into Wayuk's blah blah blah. And at the end, you know, there's a small round of claps, you know, for uh, Wayuk as he ends. Um, and then promptly, you guys land, and the captain gets off 
and tells everyone that, you know, you guys have arrived. You are free to get off. Hey. Hey. And I shake Zephyr. Right here. Zephyr kind of blinks awake and he takes a look in, uh, in the surroundings and sees everyone's heading off the boat. And so says, okay, time to go. All right, everyone's heading off the ferry. And as you guys head off, you guys um, are back at that little clearing where you first found the other ferry, which, by the way, has started setting sail off to the capital. Um, right now, it is, you know, the the moon is emerging. It's getting darker and darker as you guys, you know, sit around. Um, what would you guys like to do next? It's getting pretty late, guys. Do you think we should keep going or maybe take a easy and go to sleep for tonight? Go to sleep? We we only just got here. I mean, we did have a pretty busy day in the capital. And it is night, you know? Might be a bit more dangerous. Hmm. I don't. In the words of a plumber. What's oh. it called? Oh. Oh, yes. I've read about this plumber before. Uh, Very uh, kind of it. I mean, the purple hat. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I remember now. That's right. Alright, where are you guys heading off to? <laughs> Zephyr just standing there, so which which way are we going? <laughs> Should we head down the river? Yeah, I like that plan. Let's go down the river. I can just lay and lay. On the river? Yeah. Oh. We're, we're, we're walking there. We're not... We're not... Oh. I thought we're going the around river. We can walk alongside the river. Yeah, yeah. That that's what <laughs> we were gonna do. <laughs> Wait. Why you you're a genius. Yeah, let's walk along the river. Oh, I am no genius. I am merely a simple soul helping two souls find their way. We, we were going to walk down the river, guys. <laughs> That's not what you said. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. <laughs> All right, you guys start walking along the river, and I assume, I assume. And of course, you hit that little fork you see on the map. Are you guys heading, you know, to the right path or down that little river left path? We are walking down the river. Yeah. Towards so going, the symbols. So you're going are you going south or are you going towards like southwest? Okay, you're taking the southwest river. Yes. Alright, you guys walk along this river. It is not paved or anything. There's no path. Of course you're just traversing over, you know, in the wild, making your own um, you know, trailblazing your own path. It is getting darker. You guys are getting deeper and deeper within the forest. Um, like earlier when you guys were, you know, around Orange Tail with all the trees and everything. You guys are getting deeper and deeper into this forest until the tops of the trees cover up the skies. You guys are engulfed in even more darkness. Um... So it's a little, it's a little tricky to see. It's a little dark. I don't know. Does anyone have like dark vision or anything? I do not. I don't think I don't see dark vision on anyone's sheet. Yeah, I don't think any of our races no. would. No. Yeah, I'm Hildorf. I'm not not dwarf. Okay. Well, does anyone kidding. have any lights? Did anyone bring a torch? I can do lights. It's getting a little dark. <laughs> what do you mean you can do lights? 
Watch this. And then I... Gordon begins to cast uh, dancing lights. He starts to chant, Oh, by the motherland, ow, oh, please light the way for us. And he kind of shakes his stick. And oh, yeah, he has a stick. Yeah. He took my stick. <laughs> <laughs> the boy member. <laughs> and then they're dancing lights. You start to see four lights begin to form. And then it's it starts getting a little bit brighter. And then the other three disappear. And it's just one small little light that appears around there we go. There's light. So at first, like, Zephyr seeing the, the lights is actually pretty impressed. And then they flicker out into the one line. And he's like, oh, I mean, <laughs> I guess that's better than nothing. Yeah, I've been practicing on it. Before, you know, it's supposed to have four lights. But before, I was only doing zero. And now I can get one of them going. I, I mean, one's better than nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have, you know, this little light source with you guys, at least. Um, are your your lights, um, are they just like little orbs of light or do they appear like as torches or, or like, like, like lanterns or like little fire thingies? It's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's one torch. Oh. Interesting. Okay, well, now you guys have a little bit of light. However, you know, um, as you guys are walking through the forest with your little lights, um, would anyone like to do anything else while you guys are um, peacefully walking along this little river? You know? Anything Wave. anyone wants to do? Wave is kind of just... Uh just looking around at all of the beautiful nature that he can't see you know and taking in the fresh moist air near the river this is life don't you agree guys where'd you go Gordon We're over is here. concentrating, trying to keep the light going. Oh, but yeah, he's like, we're like, here. We're here by the he's like super sweating. dim light. <laughs> we're like sweating. <laughs> His face is scrunched up. One light. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. Your guys' travel down the river seems, um, you know, pretty peaceful, pretty calm. Sometimes you hear, you know, a little noise here and there, but you know, it's just little animals. Some bugs, you know, just buzzing around. Um, and eventually, you make it to, uh, sort of this larger part of the lake that kind of expands out. Um, as you can see on the map, it's the one, uh, Right there, you know, that big-ish part of the river, um, under the, uh, harp-looking icon. Um, and as you guys are, you know, entering this larger patch of water, you start to see farmland. Lots and lots and lots of farmland. Um, there's various crops growing on these farmlands, but... Like, these farmlands are, like, circling this large lake here that the um, river connects to. And a little further down the river, you can see um, light coming from some sort of town. Oh, that, that must be Escar, right? I don't think we walked far enough for Escar yet. I mean, I this want... this is the lake, right? We're here, just at the, the start of the lake, right beside that little harp icon. At least that's where I think we are. I wonder what the harp icon means. Do we yeah. hear any music? 
No. I don't hear music. I can't hear many things. Oh. You guys remember, um... Oh, do you guys know where uh, Naya got this map for you guys from? From the back of her stall? <laughs> yeah. We do yeah. not. <laughs> okay, well, if you guys don't know, then you guys don't know. <laughs> Dang it, we really need to start asking more questions, guys. <laughs> you guys really just pick things up and be like, okay, all right. <laughs> It's okay, you guys solve the issue once you, you, you go there. Um, but yeah, you guys are, you know, near this harp icon on the map. Do um, you guys want to, like, keep going? You want to go over to the area of this harp? Or, like, what do you guys want to do? In the words of a certain green hat boy. Sigal! Let's a go which way. <laughs> what, you don't want to see what the harp is like? Okay, no, I was just confused whether you meant towards Escar or towards the harp. <laughs> Let's go! Okay, to the harp we go. I guess we're just roaming around that area near the icon and just seeing if we can find anything of interest. Yes, I, I suppose so. Um, when you guys walk over or cross the river to where the harp icon is, um, of course, it's still it's still a little dark. You guys separate or are you guys still staying like around Gordon's little light? Uh, I would like to stay near the light. Me too, as dim as it is. <laughs> yeah, I will say the light is not that bright and also like the, the trees and all the shrubbery here is very dense so it's hard to see you know further into the forest so once you guys cross the river um you guys are staying around gordon's light traveling around i assume would everyone like to roll for um, investigation or perception I will say you guys have to roll with disadvantage. I sense something is afoot. Mm. Oof. Yes. So 18 and 13. So 13. Investigation and what? Or perception. But with disadvantage. I got six then. <laughs> okay. What's everyone's numbers? JD6. Thirteen for forty. Thirteen. Which um, which modifier do we? Use? You can use perception or investigation, whichever you prefer. Eleven. Ooh, okay, well, the three of you huddling around, you know, Gordon's little torch. Um, it's hard to investigate. You know, you don't know the exact location of whatever this harp is. You don't even know, like, what kind of structure you're exactly looking for. Um, so as you guys are, you know, just looking around, you know, pushing trees, pushing leaves out of the way, stepping over branches. Um, you guys look for maybe, like, Let's say 20 minutes. How, how long do you guys look for? Yeah, 20, 30 minutes. And you guys spend like 20, 30 minutes looking around and um, it's no avail. One, it's still very dark. You have a small light source and, you know, the forest is very dense here. And you don't know what the heck you're looking for. So it's a bit of a struggle, a bit of a struggle. Perhaps if you guys had daylight or better light here, it'd be a little easier. I, I don't think we're finding this harp, guys. We've been looking for 30 minutes. Oh, maybe the harp was the friends we made along the way. No, I, I think we were definitely supposed to find something. 
maybe we can come back tomorrow. Maybe once there's some daylight, we could maybe find what we're actually looking for. Unless you guys want to keep looking here. I'm getting pretty tired and it's pretty late. Yeah, I'm getting tired too. Moon might, is indeed overhead. It, it might be a good idea to try and head over to Escar, call it for tonight. We can continue our adventure in the morning. Shall we continue to Escar or should we set up camp here? I I got the light, guys. We can make it to X Escar. It doesn't sound like you can make it to Escar. <laughs> About how long will it take us to get to Escar? Uh... Based off of how long how long it took us to travel to here. <laughs> Maybe, you know, hour or two, like two or three hours. Depends on how fast you guys go. You know what? Here, here sounds pretty good. I mean, I'm used to live, sleeping out, outdoors. I don't know about you guys. I can sleep anywhere, including the bathroom. Oh. And, and Gordon goes, no, we can... Ma-. And then the light goes out. Oh. Um, maybe. Yeah. Looks like we're camping out here for tonight. <laughs> All right. If I remember correctly, we did not <laughs> buy any bedrolls or <laughs> any sleep tents. Um, we were no. not prepared to sleep in it outdoors. You guys don't have any light. You guys don't have any camping supplies. Um, I have an explorer's pack. Oh, Wei has an explorer's pack. Ooh, what's inside? What is inside an explorer's pack? <laughs> <laughs> Let's look it up. A bedroll, a mess kit, a tinder box. You you had ten torches this entire <laughs> <laughs> 10 days of rations, a water skin, and 50 feet of rope. <laughs> Ow. Oops. <laughs> you had that in your shell the entire time? Oh, don't look at me like that. I didn't know. I just felt a something there. Well, it's still too late to, to keep looking, so I guess we can just set up camp for tonight here. Alright, using... Oh, wait. Are you... Wait, never mind. Uh, using Wei Yu's, you know, supplies that he had packed, you know, in his shell. You guys set up camp for the night. Uh, and I assume you guys are all snoozing away. Snoozing away. Anyone want to do anything um, at your little camp before you guys head off to bed? Yeah. I'm too tired to function. I just, I, I just find like a nice tree to to sleep against since there's only one bed roll, and I'd rather not share it <laughs> with these oh. two. <laughs> oh. Well, I was going to offer you the bed roll, but okay. <laughs> yeah, Zephyr's already like far away. He found a tree. It's very comfortable. <laughs> Gordon just flops on the floor and sleeps. Does anyone stay up for as a watch? <laughs> or... Nope. <laughs> no, nope. everyone just I... goes, goes straight to bed. <laughs> you know what? That's a I... good idea. No. Nope. No, well, technically, none of you I... thought of it, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> so. I may be too tired to function, but I can still keep watch. It's okay. I put the bed roll over, over Gordon and tuck him in and make sure that he's all nice and, and cozy. And then I look at Zephyr and I'm like, nah, he's fine. <laughs> I, I am fine, thank you. <laughs> I sit on a little stump and take out a torch to light it and just kind of gaze at the stars above. All right, well, as Zephyr and Gordon are going Fast asleep, 
and Wayu's eyes are getting a little, a little heavy from tired. Um, you hear, or, or Wayu hears, um, a strange sound. And a little rustle from a bush nearby. Uh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, I should, I should tell them. And and while uh, while you are contemplating what to do, um, a small creature emerges from the bush. It is it is it is um a cat, and it goes. <laughs> and this cat, <laughs> this cat, it's got it's got long luscious fur. It's got um some um, some cream and gray colors into its coat, and. One thing you notice from this cat is that is that um it seems to be pregnant, and the cat gently makes its way over to uh to Wayu, looking up at him with uh, pleading eyes. Well, hmm. it does say if you want to be right with the world, help others, don't hurt them. Well, I will help this cat. I see. Hello, little one. What is... What are you of in need of today? Yeah, a cat kind of paws at you. And just, just looks up at you. While, while continually saying... Oh. oh. Good kitty. And then, um... I, I kind of, you know reach out my hand to let it sniff my hand. She she sniffs her hand, you know, rubbing rubbing her face all over it, and then she, she flops over and kind of like shows you her stomach, which is very obviously um, pregnant. Do you... Is, is this cat pregnant? Hmm. Maybe... Again. <laughs> Pregante. Pregante. Yeah. No, I'm too tired. But, but I, I'll, I'll help the cat. I'll, I will help this cat. Um. Do you, Do you need help? Um. Giving birth, or I, <laughs> I don't know. But I I just pet the cat. The cat just stands up and like licks your your turtly hand. <laughs> This is a very friendly cat. Maybe I should wake the two up so they can pet the cat. <laughs> oh. I go over to mm, Zephyr first. <laughs> I tap him on the shoulder. Hey. Huh? Oh, 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 wake oh, up. Hold on. Wait. Wake up. We have a I, friend. I, I'm awake. <laughs> we have a friend. I, I will say it's been about like two hours um, since uh, the two of them went to bed. Now is not the time to sleep. We have a friend. Have you been up all night? Is is that a cat? Yes. <laughs> Hello there. I need Zephyr to roll. Just roll d twenty for me. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a 19. Oh. Yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the pregnant cat <laughs> make, makes her way over to Zephyr and, and um, you know, gently like rubs rubs the side of her face um, against. Are you are you still on the floor? Yeah, I'm on against, the I'm on the ground against her face. <laughs> oh, aren't you a pretty girl? And then, can I use speech of beast and leaf? Hey, look that up. Speech I have the of beast and leaf. I can talk to animals and plants. They can't understand me. Or they can understand me. I can't understand what they say. Okay. So um, Zephyr just... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Zephyr just starts petting the cat. And he, he's like, well, what's wrong? Is something the matter? The cat meows softly while looking at you with wide, with wide, cute cat eyes. 
And then Zephyr asks if the cat is hungry. The cat uh, lets out a little stretch, and then she she kind of sits down and starts licking her paw. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not too sure what what she wants. And then I reach into like our our supplies and then I pull out some food and I just hold it in front of the cat and I'm just like, is it is this what you want? The cat's ears perk up and she she walks over, um, starts uh, taking a piece of whatever food you you brought out and starts munching on it. Oh. She's, uh, she's eating for two. She must be starving. What's it doing out here in the wild? Maybe there's a... a... hut or a... town nearby? I mean, Eskar should be about an hour away, but... that's... it's pretty far for a cat to be away from its home. I will say, just looking at this cat, it looks like an, an expensive cat. Oh... This cat definitely doesn't look like it's from the forest. <laughs> there must be a house or something nearby. Well, we How can't just leave it here by itself. I mean, who knows what's out here in the woods? It's you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't trust the cat with, um, with Gordon either. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I'm so, just kidding. I, I wasn't. <laughs> oh. No, Gordon can't hear anything. He's still sleeping. <laughs> so it's fine. He's there snoring away. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Gordon's still asleep. I need to go and tell him about our friend. Also, <laughs> while Wei you guys bring this cat over to you, Zephyr, you can, like, see, like, how, how deranged and tired this old turtle looks. <laughs> what, why are you... Have you gotten any sleep yet? Sleep is for the weak. I do not need it. I, I definitely think you might need a little bit of sleep. Oh. Mm. Have you been watching all night? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I, I definitely think you should get some sleep. I, I can take this this half of the night. I slept on the bow, so I'll be fine. Okay. And I, I think... Get- I think we can just leave Gordon. He's sleeping soundly. It's best not to bother him. Thank you. Uh, uh. I assume uh. you just knocked out. Yes. <laughs> so I just look down at the cat and I'm like, I guess it's just you and me, little buddy. The cat and then, meows. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the cat. Um. The cat. Meows. <laughs> no, does it you the meow or does it meow? It meows. <laughs> and then oh. I'm just like, no. <laughs> well, the cat lets out another stretch and it kind of walks on top of where you, you know, goes in a little circle and lays down and starts sleeping away. On top of where you shell? I don't know how way you felt. Is way you like on his stomach or like? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I guess cat is on I the show. I will gladly take a nap with the kitty. In the meantime, Zephyr just picks up one of the torches, lights it, and prepares to take over for night watch. All right. A few hours pass by, and the sun starts, you know, emerging out a little bit. A little bit more light comes into the forest. Obviously, still, you guys are in a denser part of the forest. So, you don't get too much light, but you can tell that definitely um, Daybreak is here. You guys anything? Sleep. The cat kind of hops off Wagu's back and just uh, licks his face. Oh, you're too sweet. Thank you. Good morning, Wagu. Good morning. Gordon 
begins to stir, stir awake and turns and looks towards Wayuk. Huh? What's that? Oh. Y'all got breakfast? No. Hmm? no. <laughs> the cat and the cat meow. <laughs> Th- this is this is our new friend. Uh, I, she doesn't have a name, but we found her here in the forest last night. And well, we can't just leave her out here, so I guess we're so, taking care of her. Like, how do you want to take care of her? I I think I can make a fire. No, we, not we are like not that. eating the cat. <laughs> I, I think we could just hold on to her until we make it to Eskar. Maybe we can find her owner there. We can own her. This this cat definitely looks like it belongs to somebody else. Not a, a really bunch of adventurers. <laughs> no one has to know. I'm hungry. No. We have other food, you know. <laughs> As, as much as I am tempted by the idea to keep this cat for our adventures. Okay, good. I thought you were going to be tempted to eat the cat. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to a fellow soul. Huh. I'm a vegetarian. Good to know. <laughs> anyway. I heard you yeah. also don't drink alcohol. Um... You did say that. vegetarian. <laughs> as much as I would like to have this cat for ourselves and our adventures, I do duty calls that we must find its owner. Fine. I suppose so. Anyways, we should pack up our, our stuff maybe get going unless you guys wanted to explore the area now that it, there's some sunlight in the words of a yellow hat boy it's a girl who are all these people you're meeting with these colorful hats <laughs> anyways we pack up our stuff and right. I guess we start heading towards Eskar again as kid, you guys are packing all your stuff up, and as you guys are, you know, picking up your pieces of your camp, the cat is kind of just laying in the middle there, on, on her side as she's watching everyone move around. Uh, and then do you guys just st- start hanging off, or? Well, we're not leaving the cat. Uh, Zephyr, like, slowly approaches the cat and just offers his arm out says you coming along the cat goes I can hold on to the cat I I think no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I just like offer my arm for the cat to climb onto uh the cat she kind of wobbles to her to her feet but the the weight of her enormous um pouch you could say Kind of, kind of keeps her from, uh, <laughs> you know. Okay, then I, I lift up the cat, and then I just hold it in my arms, I guess. All right, the cat lets you pick her up very easily, and she seems very content in your arms. Uh, she's a little heavy. She's a little, she's a little bit of a larger cat, and uh, there are definitely multiple little little biscuits brewing in her tummy. But yeah, she's kind of enormous. She's, uh, yeah. So, now, yes, we. What, what would happen if this cat were to give birth? What would we do? What would we do, Zephyr? What do you think? And no, I'm not asking Gordon. <laughs> I think we should just start walking before that happens. And if it happens, we will deal with it then. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Oh. Oh. We'll ignore him for now. 
Yeah, I'm just like covering the cat's ears. <laughs> All right, you guys are traveling back down the river. Yes. Yep. All right, you guys make your way down the river. The sun is nice and bright today. Uh, let me change the music to be a little happier. Uh, yeah. You guys are traveling along the river. And eventually you get out of like the really dense part of the forest. And start walking along uh, all that farmland that you saw previously. Um... There's not a lot of people out on the fields. You see some people here and there further out. Um, just, you know, kind of tending to their crops and their animals and whatnot. Um, you know, the cat stays nice and content in Zephyr's arms. And as you guys are walking down, and you notice um, the town. Kind of down the river, of course, like I said earlier. It seems to be a pretty large town as you guys are approaching it. It's sort of like in a circle structure, you know? Like there seems to be a, a centerpiece of this town and everything around it is just kind of, you know, built around it uh, like rings. Similar to the farmland, they're kind of built like in rings around this kind of center point of the town. Uh, but yeah, you guys are just walking down the path, walking uh, alongside all, these, all this farmland. Um, do you guys want to do anything here, or just continue on to the town? Mm. This is a beautiful place. But... Mm, we must make haste. Yeah, I think considering our current situation, we just continue heading towards the town. Alright. You guys head into, or head to the town. Um, you guys make your way to one of the entrances, which is like a large sort of archway. There's no gate or anything. There's no like fancy guards there like you saw at the Capitol. People are just, you know, going in and out, talking, chilling. Um, very similar to, you know, Orangedale and the Capitol. There's, there's a wide mix of different races and people here. Um, and as you enter the town, it is... Quite impressive, not as fancy as the capital, but it is a lot more developed than Orangedale. Orangedale previously, you know, was kind of just a village with a bunch of huts and stuff, and the fancy, fanciest thing they had was uh, Kevin's Inn. But here, there's like actual structures, um, and like businesses and buildings and shops, and there's a lot of people here who are, they're a little more richly clothed, but Nothing too fancy, you know, nothing like what you saw at the palace, at the capital. Um, but as you guys enter in, you can immediately tell what, you know, this town is sort of centered around. In the middle is a large building that seems to be a very, very fancy looking inn. Uh, what would you guys like to do here? Let's go in the inn. Will there be alcohol involved? Well, maybe there's postings there, so I'm looking for a cat. Yeah. Or maybe someone in there knows who this cat belongs to. But will yeah. there be or alcohol someone can involved? prepare the cat for us. Uh. Y yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure there will be alcohol involved. All right, I'm in. We're headed to the inn. All right. You guys head towards this inn, the center of this town. It's, um, like I said, it's large and it's kind of fancy looking. It's, uh, as you guys enter this inn, it's got pretty, like, intricate herringbone wood flooring and floral pattern wallpaper. Um, but when you enter, it's kind of just like a lobby at the front desk. Uh, there is what you assume to be, like, an innkeeper. Um, and to describe this room, it is, it's a decently sized room. In the corner is, uh, the table. 
But like right down the middle of this room is like an open archway that goes out into uh, a garden that's um, outdoors. And then there are doors to the left and right side of this room that you assume go to like the little in rooms. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you see. It's just a little lobby. There's a table, some couches, um, some rooms to the left and right, and that large open hallway out into like a garden area. And of course, the innkeeper, um, desk person at the desk on the side. Wayuk walks up to the desk keeper. Hello. Hello Is there. This the Holiday Inn. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. This is the Golden Duck. The Golden Duck. Yes. Is this the inn that makes the ducks walk around? Um, no, sir. Oh, I must be thinking of a different one. Ah, oh, well, anyway, um, we, we are but humble adventurers, and we have found this cat. Oh. The, uh, the person on the desk takes a good look at the cat. And it kind of just like smiles and, and nods. Do you know anything about a uh, missing cat or um, anything of the sort? The uh... The desk person, uh, they shake their head and they're like, No, not that I know of, but um, usually if you, there's like lost pet uh, things, you can find a flyer uh, around the town hall. And then they kind of point like north of the building. Thank you. My pleasure, sir. Is there anything else you would like to add that is not, um, that does not I have mean, to do with eating? I have something to add. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Gordon. Well, why you said I can't talk about it. Uh, anyway. Zephyr, can I see the map real quick? Yeah, here. And he just passes it over. And then I go over to the barkeep. Do you have a moment, please? Um, yes, sir. What is this apple? Do y'all serve apple cider or something? Um. And he points at the map. Uh, that shows the apple symbol for X card. The receptionist kind of like squints and leans over and um, kind of just shakes his head and he's like, I don't know anything about apples here, sir. I know there's Orange Dale, but we're no Apple Dale. Uh, I don't know. And he kind of shrugs. So nothing comes to mind with the apple? Uh, no, not at all. Not that I can think of. I mean, we sell apples, but. It's not like we're known for apples. Mm. No apple cider. Oh, there might be apple cider some some places. Uh, I suppose. There no anyone apple who? Apple beer. Oh, no apple beer. No. Is there anyone who specializes in apple farming in the city? Oh, there there probably is, but I, I wouldn't know much about that. All right. Good talk. Good talk. All right. The uh, receptionist just awkwardly smiles. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Thank you. Oh, and if anyone goes comes around asking about a missing cat, uh, you can tell them the furious, the furious four. Uh, look, look for uh, them. Oh, oh, all right. I will tell them that, sir. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't we now be the Furious Five since we have the cat? But do we have the cat? The cat oh, meows. Um, she, she's not ours, technically. 
we're still partying with them. I mean, you know. And what if we can't find the owner? I mean, <laughs> I mean she, and she had dinner. No. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with her replacing the staff. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes more sense. I kind of caressed the staff a bit. Oh, he didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. Okay. And then I just like whispered to the guy, I, I, I did mean it. You would be much better than the staff. Anyways, I guess we should be, should, we should head to town hall unless you guys want to do anything else here at the inn. In the words of a pink cat guy. What's it going on? Wait, pink cat? Is, is there a pink cat? I don't know. I don't yeah, know any of these colored hat people. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm accessing the Akashic Records right now. <laughs> I don't see anything related to a pink hat. Okay, let's get going then. All right, you let's guys go. exit the inn and start heading uh, northward, wherever uh, the reception is pointing. And we will take a quick break. <laughs> okay. All right. Break time. Break time. I'm going to break screen right now.
And so I was like, let's eat the cat. <laughs> and I was like, all oh, right. Um, retconned. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> oh, we're back. JK. Um, <laughs> okay, you guys are exiting the inn. As you guys exit, some kids from um, that hallway place area garden, they come running out. There's like a pack of six of them. They're kind of just laughing, chasing each other. And they kind of like run run around your guys' legs as they leave uh, the inn. Um, as one of them comes by, they look at Wayu and they're like, Turtle! And then they run. Oh. But you guys make your way... I am a turtle. <laughs> you guys make your way up north of the town. Um... And as you guys are making uh, your way uptown, um, you notice that um, the river sort of flows in the town. And as you guys are walking next to this river, there is a little fishing area. And next to the fishing area is this cute little little shop there that says bait shop. And as you guys are walking around, you see you know you see some vegetable stands. Um, you see some other little stands, uh, and a lot of other just established businesses, places. There's a, there's a flooring place. There's a guy that does, does roofing. Uh, but you find, like, this large, like, stone, or, uh, like, stone flooring area, outdoor area that is very, you know, quad-esque. There is a large building uh, north of this little clearing, which appears to be a sort of town hall. There's a large clock built into it. Um, and there's a lot of people just like outside of this town hall area, sitting on benches, chat, uh, chatting around. Um, and in the center of this stone clearing, um, there's like a, uh, a board with a lot of flyers like um, nailed into it. Let's look there. We head to the board. All right, you all approach this board. Um, it's kind of a big mess. There is a lot of, you know, stuff tacked onto it. Um, are you guys looking specifically for people missing a lost cat or anything? I'm, I'm kind of just interested in what's on the board in general. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to give back the cat. Oh. <laughs> As you guys are perusing the board, um, you know, you see a lot of old flyers, a lot of new flyers. Um, a lot of these flyers are kind of just uh, places that are hiring and looking for new people. For example, like there's a carpenter that's looking for a new apprentice. Um, there are a lot of flyers about someone recruiting uh, people for his, um, quote-unquote, wood business. Uh, there's a lot of those flyers around. Um... Does, does the flyer have quote-unquote on it? <laughs> no, it just kind of generally s means that he has, like, some sort of business related to wood. If okay. You're, nothing I to... I thought the flyer literally just said wood business <laughs> on it in quotes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of just flyers of people looking for people, you know, to help them, to hire, um, looking for some hands on, you know, their farmland and whatnot. Um, not too much, uh, about, like, missing pets. Uh, you see, like, missing people. Nothing specific to, like, you know, pets of that sort. Um... There's some flyers for uh, at the capital. They're hiring guards. You get a good, good pay, and just general flyers like that. Nothing too fancy. There's like a, a little weather report on the side, and some important like, like there's a a list of like town hall meetings for people to reference if they would like to participate. Um, but that's about it. That's all that really catches your guys' eye. What does the weather look like? Um, 
Let me, uh, let me just look up and it's like, oh, it's pretty nice. <laughs> Are you looking at the flyer or just up in the sky? <laughs> or the, the, sky. Weather <laughs> the weather report. Um, you read o- over the weather report. Uh, most of it is just normal clear skies. Um, there's a chance of precipitation in a few days, but that's it. They have that technology. That's pretty cool. How many cool. days is a few days? Like three. Double or nothing? What do you? What does that even mean? <laughs> Are you Double. betting on the weather? Of course I am. Oh. Oh, I, uh, I, I don't do bets. I, I don't do bets. Not anymore. Not even for whether what we're gonna do with the cat. We we are not betting on that. <laughs> Why not? I think it's the most fair way. I'm going to overrule you on that. (laughs) (laughs) It looks like there's nothing about our little friend here on this board, so maybe we should check out Town Hall. Maybe someone there knows something. I suppose we can go to the Town Hall. Wait, any other ideas? I agree. I mean, we... We, we could see if there's a liquor store nearby. Um, yeah. my, my wise mind tells me that is not the right decision. Your, your wise mind would be correct. Bless you. Thank you. Oh. Let's go. All right. You guys are entering the town hall. And we enter th- the town hall. There is a reception desk. And um, there is an old lady there. And she looks to you guys and she's like, Oh, hello. Welcome in. Hello. Uh, and then we approach the desk. And I just say, Hi there. We're just a group of adventurers. We are walking around in the, in the area and we happen to stumble across this cat. And we were just wondering if you maybe heard about any missing pets or maybe happen to know who this cat belongs to? Ooh. Uh, the old woman takes a good look and she's like, what a lovely cat. Uh, let's see. Missing cat. Missing cat. Um, you know, I, it might not be from here. Uh, it might be a, a cat from the capital. I think, I think capital people own cats. All the way from the capital? How would it have made it across the water? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe he's a really good swimmer. Do people not own cats in this part of the of the island? Uh, not cats like that. You know, we have barn cats here and there, but that cat, she's a she's a bit of a fancy one. Oh, good to know. Well. Thank, thanks for your help, I guess. No problem, no problem. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for you guys. Uh, and then I, I, Zephyr looks over to Gordon and then like motions for him to to talk to the the receptionist about the cat. We can eat the cat now. Oh. And then I'm just like the key. Oh, the key. Ke- ke- Key. Oh yes. And then Gordon walks up and goes over to the receptionist and says, "Hi. I was wondering if you ever seen anything like this." And he pulls out the key of his bunghole, hey, from his oh. pocket. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, she she picks it up and she's like, "Wow, what a what a beautiful key." My, I've never seen anything this intricate in my life before. Ah, uh, let me think. Um, well, there's an apple on it. Uh, she hands it back and she's like, You can ask, uh, maybe a, a jeweler would know? Although I don't know why a jeweler would be making such a key like that. An apple, hmm. 
We do have apple the farmers. X have to do with apple? Ooh, X car and apples. I, I wouldn't really say I put the two together. Um, perhaps you could ask uh, the Department of Agriculture. Maybe, maybe they know something about and such a beautiful apple key. Where can we get to the Department of Agriculture? Ooh, it's a uh, once you leave the town hall, it's uh, you go down the right, the right side of the inn, the golden duck, and it should be on the the left somewhere. Um. I mean, the right somewhere. <laughs> it, it, it can't be hard to miss. It's down the little alleyway, and, and uh, it's got a sign with a beautiful, beautiful uh, lily of the valley on it. This sounds shady. Oh no, no, no! It's a, it's official. It's, it's, it's an official government building. Worry not. Hmm. Okay. Thank you for your help. No problem. How <laughs> congested do I sound? Of a brown hat guy. Oh. Let's go. Would anyone else like to ask the receptionist anything? Yes. Hmm. Do you have the time to listen to me whine? Oh. About everything and nothing all at once. I'm, I'm not sure what that means, sir. Well, I am one of those um, melodramatic fools, neurotic uh, to the uh, bone, oh. no doubt about uh. it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got Kashuk records. Sorry, um, uh, uh, I got my I got my my words mixed up. My bad. Um, do you have the time to? Uh, 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 oh, oh dear! You you know uh, we do have a great great uh, some great medical practices around here. Perhaps you should go go visit one of them. Uh, I, I think our friend here is just a little tired. He, he didn't sleep much last night, but thank oh, you dear. so much for your help. Oh, yes, yes. We'll, we'll get out of your hair. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, oh. Um, I, I, is there anyone that can speak to cats? Oh, uh, to cats? Um, you know, I'm not too sure. You know, we do have some, uh, we have cat people in this town. I, I'm not sure if they can talk to cats, but you know, they're they're cat-like. Perhaps they, they could. Is there a specific cat language? Oh, I'm not sure about that, sir. I, I don't really know much about that. Hmm. This is something I must find out. Oh. A new way you side quest. <laughs> <laughs> side quest acquired. <laughs> to cat or not to cat? That is the question. And then the receptionist goes, Well, if you are looking for a, a, a cat person, um, you know, one notable person I, I quite like, I quite respect is um, Chomo. He is uh, uh, the master of the bait shop. Yes, he's he's a wise cat person, and his fur is very soft, very soft. Wise, you say? Mm -hmm. oh, we can have many a discussion. I, I'm oh. sure you guys can. Let's go to Jumbo. Come on, let's. Let, come on, Vamanos. <laughs> 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 I thought we are going to go see the Department of Agriculture. That can wait. That can wait. I mean, uh, we, we could split up. We don't all have to go together. I will take the cat. <laughs> uh, 
let, let, let's let the cat decide. And then Zephyr just puts the cat on the ground and then takes a step back. And the cat kind of wobbles over and falls to her side. She goes, Meh. You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll hold on to the cat. But we need the cat so that oh. the cat person can speak through. <laughs> through. That makes allegedly, sense. allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's go see the cat. Okay, I guess we're all going. Okay. <laughs> well, luckily, you know, you guys did see the bait shop on the way over. So, um, who picks up this poor old pregnant cat? I'll pick her up. Okay, away you turn with the cat. She lets you pick her up very easily. And you guys are off on your way to the bait shop, which, like I said, is right next to these little, these little fishing areas right next to the river. Um, but as you approach the bait shop, there is, um, there's a dog person in front of the bait shop. And this dog person is, uh, reading a sign that is outside of the shop. Um, but yeah, you guys approach the shop. Would you like to read the sign, enter the shop, or, you know? Yeah, let's see what the sign says. Alright. You read the sign, and it says... Bait shop master Chomo is on a business trip to the capital. And as you guys are reading this, the dog person right right outside reading this as well. He uh he kind of just sighs out and he folds his arms, he's a little grumpy. He's like, "What the hell? What? Chomo? Master Chomo?" And he kind of just uh, mumbles to himself. Pardon me. Did you say Master Chomo? Yes. <laughs> Master what Chomo. Is this, what is this Chomo for him? Well, Master Chomo, he's the bait master. All right. You, some, you know, call him even. <laughs> I just got it. I guess some would say he's a master baiter. Yes, and exactly. He is the one and only. He, no. he is, <laughs> he knows all about bait. You know, he's king of the fishermen over here. And that, the capital, those capital people and the dog man, he, he shakes a fist. And he's like, they're calling Master Chum over there to inspect some sort of, sort of issue in the capital with the fish. But, you know... Master Chomo, he's supposed to be here in Exgar. He's supposed to be, you know, helping me out, selling me my bait. What the hell? Uh, are you a fisherman? Yes. Yes, indeed. And he proudly, um, kind of, he, he's holding some sort of, um, like, uh, what's it called? The little, the little, Toolbox for bait thingy. A tackle box? Yeah, a tackle box. He holds it up. However, this tackle box looks um quite uh quite childish. Perhaps um, a tackle box you would give to, you know, a small a small child, but he holds it up and he's like, Yes. Wait, how old is this guy? He seems to be middle aged. A middle aged dog dog man. Whatever floats your boat. Do you happen to know this uh, Master Chomo very well? Yes. Do you have any relationship with him? Yes. I I personally call myself his apprentice. Oh, but you didn't know that he would be leaving to the capital? No, he never tells me anything. That guy so mysterious. And then he sighs. Make an aside to Zephyr. Something tells me that this person is not the new apprentice. Yeah, I, I, I picked up on that too. <laughs> but do you think you can talk to the cat? Uh, I don't think this. Cats and dogs are somewhat the same, right? I don't know how that works, so. <laughs> Um, you want to ask him? 
Yes. Hey, can you talk to this cat? Uh, the dog man, he looks over at, at the cat in Wayne's arms. And the dog uh, walks over and he's like, Hello. And the cat goes, and the dog says, ah, you said meow. I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah, I would know. You see, Master Chomo, he's a cat man, you know? And sometimes he meows. And I understand him on a spiritual level. So I think um, I know my way with cats, you know? I'm not surprised. Master Chomo taught you a lot, didn't he? Yes, yes. Let me tell you a story. Uh, all right. Uh, not a story. No, not a story. Sorry. Oh. I, 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 I've been. Uh, I. Uh, you know, you could be a bait yourself. You could probably catch like a, a whale with you. You know. Oh, how rude. Oh, it's a compliment, sir. You can also be a master bait. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm... I'm... Uh, never mind. I'll, I'll just... I, I just pet the cat a bit and turn away. Okay, well, the dog man turns over to Gordon Zephyr and he's like, So, are you guys into baiting too, or like what? I, I've caught fish before, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> would you say that you're also a master? I would not. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I am far from master. There is much that Master Chomo has yet to teach me. And, you know, I was here today to learn more. But he is gone. Well... Until he's back, what are you going to do in the meantime? Well, he kind of puts his hands on his hips and he looks over at the bait shop and he's like, maybe I'll just break in or something. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if your master would want you to do that. Well, I'm sure as his apprentice, you know, I basically got the keys to the shop, so I'm sure he won't mind. You guys want to come in? you have the keys? He kind of ignores you and he walks over to the door. And yeah, he starts, uh, he tries to open up the handle. Obviously, it is locked. <laughs> and he's kind of like, well, damn, you guys, you guys don't open this thing or? I'm like, what? Um, perhaps we should, um, part ways now. Yes, um. Do you guys want some, some bait or what? Like, you guys are here no. for bait. Oh, no. No, we were here to talk to the Master Baiter. Oh, you can't talk to Master Chobo. You have to, you have to, go, you have to go through me if you want to talk to Master <laughs> Chobo. Uh, well, he is not here right now, so we cannot, we cannot, unfortunately, communicate with him anyway, so, okay, let's... Let's get going. You guys walk away? Yes. I mean, it was, it was somewhat nice meeting you. The dog man, he, he squints at you three, and he's like, I'll remember you guys. I'm putting your faces on Master Choma's walls, and he'll know what you guys did. Huh? What, what did we do? <laughs> That's right. Play innocent. It'll help you in court. Okay, well, let's get going, guys. <laughs> I guess we're headed to the the agriculture building. I don't remember what it's called. Department of Agriculture. Yep. Everyone hanging there together. Yeah. All right, you guys walk over there, and as you guys are walking over there, the cat in Wayu's arm she kind of stirs around and makes a little a small painful. Are you okay, little one? She, uh, she kind of just licks, like, your hand. Ah. Oh, you'll be alright. I see. 
then you guys find the agriculture building. Um, it's a it's a pretty cute building, you know. Nice structure, made of nice wood. Very cute it's sign. In the alleyway. Yeah, in the alleyway. It's not like a dingy alleyway. <laughs> it's just a little hallway ish. But there's plenty of light. It's not shady or anything. It's it's clean. There's like plants all over the place and like vines growing around um, the building. But you guys Dang, enter. This is a pretty nice alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> you guys enter, and you know, a little bell rings above you guys. Um, but no one notices you guys entering because there is, appears to be some sort of argument, fight happening in this building. Can we uh -oh. listen in? Yes. There's a pretty hefty, like, middle aged human man. He seems to be uh, the main person kind of shouting. He's at the counter um, yelling at uh, two people behind the counter and a group of people are just kind of huddled around him. Um, not like with him, but they're just kind of there watching and kind of murmuring amongst themselves as uh, this guy is like, you don't even know what he's talking about. He's like screwing out permits and that he should be allowed to to do his wood business and it's no fair that everyone has all this farmland and he's not able to do his work but um do you guys just stand off to the side or well i mean we don't really have a have a opinion in this matter we're just yeah, leaves. what's our role in this? Uh, <laughs> uh, is, is there anyone around us that looks like they maybe work here and are not in that little crowd right now? Um, no. It just seems to be people that are kind of there because um, they also need to like talk with the officials there. Some people are like just sitting against the walls awkwardly with like papers in their hands watching this whole debacle happen. Uh, Zephyr goes up to one of the people just waiting. Says, what, what's going on over here? Um, she looks over at you and she's like, you guys must be new here. It's Jack again. And she sighs. Who, who's this Jack guy? Is, is he the one shouting over there? Yep. She kind of, with her papers like folded up, she points over at him with them and she's like, that's Jack Daryl, and he's trying to get permits to deforest the uh, the forest around here. She just shakes her head. And she's like, you've probably seen his, his ads all over the town. He's looking for people to, to work for him and uh, chop down all these trees. Oh, the quote-unquote wood business flyers. Yes, yeah, those ones. Quote unquote. <laughs> He wants to start some business where he sells um, our wood to the neighboring islands because, uh, you know, the, the Turek trees here, they're pretty thick and they're great quality, so they sell for a pretty penny, but she just shakes her head and, and you know, she's a little disappointed. Well, uh, what's the, the big commotion? Why, why is everyone waiting around? Well, he's doing his little screaming match. You know, after a little bit, he'll cool down and try again later. But he's just yelling at them because they won't allow him to, you know, deforest. And she rolls her eyes. Deforest. But as you are talking to her, like, as she said, Jack starts, you know, dying down. And he starts backing away and he kind of just stomps off out of uh, the building. Well, that's over with. Does anyone approach the the, the receptionist or the, the staff? Um, some of them do. There is like, there's two staff at the table. Uh, there's one person talking to one person at the desk. Uh, the other person is um, totally free and open though. Uh, most people there were just waiting to turn in some papers. So they just quickly hand them over and leave the building. Well, Jordan, if you wanted to ask about the key, well, seems like someone's free over there. Okay. 
And then Gordon kind of waddles over. Hello? Hello, sir. How can I help you? Well, we were walking through the forest and we found this key. We brought it to the town hall and they said maybe you guys might know something about it. Did I pull um, up the key? He says I got the key and he's like, ah, keys, huh? He scratches his head for a little bit and he's like, you know, uh, that could be for anything, you know? It could be for someone's, like, journal for all I know. But, but I mean, how fancy it is. Yeah, it is pretty fancy. Um, uh, have you brought it up to a, a scholar, maybe? Maybe they read about it in some book? It looks, it looks like something you'd read about in a book. This seems like a rabbit hole. So like, you don't have any clue about the key? Uh, nope. Nothing that comes to mind, but, you know, if you're looking to take your hands off of it, I don't mind holding on to it. Alright. No. Uh, For 5,000 gold. Ooh, that's a little steep. Not sure I can do that deal. Fine. Double. Oh. I certainly can't do that deal. What? I thought we're supposed to be negotiating. I, uh, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> you know, Jorgen once upon a time told me that when you're out and about doing your adventure, haggling and bartering is the best way to do business. Oh, uh, so. Sir, this I'll is I'll cut you a deal. The Department of Agriculture. Eleven thousand. Oh, we don't really even have money here. So if, I, if, if we don't like, do transactions this isn't like between, this. This isn't between me and the agriculture building. It's between me and you. Oh, uh, sir, <laughs> I I don't you, get paid enough to afford that, sir. Zephyr turns to wake and are like, maybe, maybe we should wait outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Damn. Jorgen did say one must be merciful. Nine thousand gold. Sir, I think we'd have to ask you to leave. Um... What wait, you offered? I I wait, did not offer like that. <laughs> wait, you walks over to the reception. I'm sorry, my my friend did here is a bit uh is a bit um uh stupid i, no. I think the word you're looking for is dumb <laughs> no no he's he he's a bit stoned right now oh oh, oh i don't think that's oh. any better <laughs> um he's uh, l listen listen forget forget about the key we we were we'll, we'll be on our way um uh, do you happen to know of anybody that is that can speak to cats to, to speak to cats, like to un understand them and everything. Yes. Um, he kind of scratches his head again, and he's like, uh, "I suppose someone who's in tune with animals, um, um, or you know, someone I don't do. Are druids? Do druids talk to animals? Is that a thing that druids do? Perhaps, um." I, I'm not sure. You, I'm not sure. Okay, thank you very much. We'll we'll be on our way. Uh, all right. All right. Come, come on, Gordon. Come, come on, Gord. Come on, Gordon. We're 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 leaving. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, as you guys exit the building, you guys are stopped by the one and only Jack Daryl. He oh. kinda he's kinda stands in your way and he's like You three You're new to this town, aren't you? No. No, we're not. Z Zephyr just side eyes me and be like, what what is going on? <laughs> uh Jack Dale rolls for insight. <laughs> 
Are we oh, rolling for dear. deception? <laughs> sure, roll for deception. It was rolling for deception. I mean, Wait, you're you. the one who said it, so... Uh, okay. <laughs> Are you deceptive? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, nine. Uh oh. oh. Yeah, Daryl, he oh, lets out a, he gets out a, a hearty laugh, and he's like, you're not fooling me. I was born and raised in X car, and I know a new face when I see it, especially one like yours. And he puts it with you. <laughs> oh. And he's like, are you oh, guys that's... looking to make some, some money, some moolah, some mm. coinage? I don't think we should associate with this guy. I said to like Gordon and Wayuk. I've got a project down working. <laughs> Excuse me? 7,000 gold. Well, you could definitely make 7,000 if you joined me. Now, don't. Double yeah. or nothing. We're, we're not interested in any. I have. I, who said I was deforesting? I'm not deforesting. We're we're not interested in any working opportunities as of right now. We yeah, we're we're quite busy. We have a lot of things on our plate at the moment. Well, well, what if I told you I I could help you with your your little issue? Which, which one? one? <laughs> <laughs> um. Gordon's not really an issue. He's more of a member uh, of our party. Oh, that is not what I meant. But I, I heard yeah, that you're please. you're looking for someone that can speak to to cats. And who is this someone that you recommend? Well, you know, they're a friend of mine. You know, I I could introduce you to them if you wanna you wanna join me on my little project. This sounds like a very strings attached kind of deal. How about we discuss this outside? You guys are outside. Oh, okay. He stopped you <laughs> in the alleyway. How about we discuss this right here? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what we're doing. What, what, what's this project? Right, so, you know, I'm a businessman, and if I see an opportunity, I'm going to take it, right? So I've been investing since I was only five years old. All right. And okay, but what, what's the project? And, you know, I've been dreaming of this project ever since I was a wee lad. I'm trying to make it happen. I'm following my dreams. All right. There you still haven't mentioned is what the an issue is. amongst the other islands. You know, each island, they've got their own infrastructure. They've got their own little, little quirks in there. They're resources, right? But Turek, one of our strongest resources, wood. Look around you. Tons of wood. You know, these trees, sometimes they get in the way, you know? They're, they're, they're too big, they're too much. And, like, you never uh, know when there's there's some, you know? And, um, you know, I, I have a wood business. You know, my father, he was the town's carpenter before he was replaced by a woman. And he, he spits on the ground and it says, I don't know how to work with wood. And I know Turex wood is great. So what do you say? Join me on my project and we can bring Turex wood to the other islands. And we can be rich. Rich! What do you Sir. say? Sir, I think you're talking to the wrong people. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean... One of us, not saying which one, um, has romantic interests in trees. Excuse me? I I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would say I'm attuned with nature. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, sir. He is you very know, I, I know a very pretty tree. I could introduce oh. you to her if you... Oh. Uh, I, I am not interested in trees. 
aside from oh. protecting them and not cutting them down. So I think we are not interested. Well, we are our values align. I also care about the trees. Uh, I care about the well-being of the trees. You know, you know. Oh, are you the Lorax? <laughs> What's a little mixer? <laughs> oh, yeah, oops. You know, when, when I was doing schooling, I learned about plants, all right? And you know what I learned yes, about plants? These are plants. <laughs> plants, they be sharing the soil and water, but they be stealing it from each other. So, you know, I can help you find a pretty little tree. We can chop down all the trees around that little tree so they won't be competing for all that whatever the hell they need to be trees. What do, you, uh, what do you say? I, I, I love all trees equally, so I'm not I'm not interested. Well, well, I I I know someone that talks to cats, okay? And I know you guys are looking for a cat translator. Something tells me you're trying to pull our leg. I don't think we're that desperate. <laughs> Roll for perception. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be an insight roll. Okay. Could we could we do something like that? To see if or to suss out if he has ulterior motives. Well he clearly does. But... <laughs> I think he's just very straightforward with what he wants to do and we're just very not interested. <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys want to do? <laughs> Can we persuade him to leave us alone? Sure, what do you say to him? We just tell them that we're not interested and we have to get going. All right. That we'll, we're all... we'll figure out our cat situation on our own. We're all for some persuasion. <laughs> Oof. Um, I have... 11. You know what? I'll roll as well. Yeah, this can be a team effort. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Shmole. Best of right, like, well... No! <laughs> Is that the first nat 20 skill roll? I don't think so. <laughs> well, I have minus one, so technically oh. it's, it's a 19. Uh, but Well, <laughs> it's still a nat 20-ish, but... Yeah. Okay, Jack Daryl, you know... He starts thinking a little bit, and then he starts to cower, and he's like, you know... Uh, never mind about all the wood stuff, you know? Uh, I I saw this you, turtle in the forest once, and it was, like, glowing and magical. It, he sort of looked like you, I guess. And now that I think about it, you know, maybe I should be asking you guys about... I... I... And he runs away. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of interesting people in this, in this town. <laughs> On this island. Yeah, you aren't wrong. Well, can we can we check in on our little cat friend? See how they're doing. Yes, your cat friend. She is appears to be a little bit more uh, disheveled. Uh, she kind of looks at you guys frantically, and she's meowing in her belly. You know, it's it's large. It's in charge, and perhaps maybe. Uh, these kittens are about to be popped out any second now. <laughs> any second? Maybe. Maybe. I, I don't think our, our little friend is doing so well. Maybe instead of trying to find its owner, we just find some kind of veterinarian or maybe some kind of doctor. Even maybe like a rancher could help. The cat is meowing. <laughs> I, I take it that the cat wants to agree with that idea. <laughs> yes, I think so too. Okay. Who could we go to? Do we have do we have time to go back to town hall and ask? <laughs> She's about to burst as set said. <laughs> okay. Can we take a look around us? Is there anything nearby? Or anyone nearby who might be able to help? Um. Oh, I know. Oh, yes, we. Let's walk back into the building and ask. Does anyone know a vet? <laughs> oh. Do, do you want to do that? <laughs> I have no shame in doing it. 
Okay, while he's doing that, can we take a look around to see if there's anyone nearby who can help? Um, no, but you can roll for me. Um, give me a roll. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Hoo -hoo. All of us? Sure, everyone roll. I don't know what Gordon's doing, but just roll. I rolled a 15. They're I rolled a nothing. Uh, well, okay, let's say before Wei Yu could even enter uh, back into the building, Zephyr spots what appears to be some sort of a vet clinic in the corner of the town. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, let, let's go. <laughs> That's the, and then we, 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 learned, we start running. We don't have time for the words. <laughs> we just start running. You guys start running. You burst into the vet clinic. Um, Does anyone want to say it? She's about to pop. Oh. oh. Um, the people working there, they they understand, they see the situation, they spot the cat, they pick up the cat from your arms, um, they kind of put it down into a, a little, like, like they a put little, <laughs> they put it into a cozy little bed, um, and kind of into a corner, um, and one of the, like, it's like blocked off by like little fences and stuff, and, and they're like, all right, well, she definitely, uh, appears to be, you know? Um, and then as you guys are peering over down, uh, she begins to give birth. And you start seeing, um, you know, little slimy fur balls slipping out of her. Um, but Breakfast. as they come out, no. they, they look a little strange. The cats, they come out, they, they appear to be alive, at least the little kittens. But there's a strange... Strange feeling in the room. Um, you know, this cat with the long, luscious fur starts uh, pulling out these little babies that are, are a little slimy. Um, but not like the usual, you know, little little liquids and, and fluids from the mother cat that you would usually see. The fluid around them is seems to be opaque. A little dark. Not dark like blood, but seemingly inkish there's an inkish tone to them uh and these cats come out all all in a strange coat color not similar to the mother cat at all it is similar to maybe like an an iridescent black black but there's a little shimmer to them where you can see you know like teals and blues at certain you know reflections of the light um, but yeah, they came out, they come out in this like slimy black goo. Still alive, still alive. About three of them come out. And the mother cat immediately goes to tend to them. She's looking up all this black goo from them. Um, and Gross. the vets around you guys are kind of in shock. And they kind of, they kind of murmur amongst themselves. Um, and... Just what you guys can hear from their whispering is that uh, something about the kittens being cursed. That's genetics. Did, did I hear something about a curse? <laughs> listen. Listen. The crying. They are definitely, they're definitely acting like normal kittens. The, the mother cat is tending them as usual, but their appearance and all of this, like, like black fluid from the mother is something strange, something strange. You can also feel something maybe magical in the air, especially for those that are a little more magically attuned. Even those that aren't really, um, you know, can sense magic, you guys feel like something, something I magically super different. super magically attuned. <laughs> okay, what's Gordon's thoughts on this strange um, happening? Gordon thinks it's perfectly normal. Uh, oh. I, I can I can try to detect magic. Try to? Yeah, I have. That's one of my features or my traits. What is it? Just detect magic? For bold magic, refreshes on use. I can either detect magic or disguise self. Ugh. How come you don't use this? Oh my gosh. 
I honestly do not remember <laughs> up until this point. But can I try? Yes. Let me look up what specifically can do I, do I have to roll? Because it says I either cast with intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Object. Mitech magic, my key. Well, yeah, that is true. That that would have been. Good it's idea. like that's why I asked last. I think last session I asked if anyone's like had anything magical because I feel like there's a lot of things that like, you know, like not combat wise would be like good, good spells to know. But um, it's it's not really a spell. I think it's more flavored as just they are attuned to magic because of their race. Yeah, well, I'm just saying like for other things so, that happened in this yeah. campaign. <laughs> I mean, unless the key was like glowing with magic, I don't think I would have sensed anything, I guess. That's the canon reason, I guess. I guess so, but for it to take magic, you technically have to cast in its concentration. But I'll just say, okay. yes, you definitely detect um, a strange, uh, maybe even dark like magic coming from these kittens. Oh, so I don't even have to roll? No, nah, okay. I won't have you roll. It's whatever. Okay. Is there something I can do with, I guess, my skill set of, I guess, perceiving this this force, this magic? Um, besides t telling or or sensing that it's uh, so some some sort of like darker magic, I think that's about it. Like you can feel it, but you're not exactly like. You can't really pinpoint like what it is, but something about these kittens uh, definitely feel or allude to what the vets are talking about, like uh, like these cursed kittens. Not sure if it's exactly a curse, but something and wrong with these kittens. From evil and good. <laughs> <laughs> you want to use it? <laughs> I mean, sensing the dark magic, Zephyr takes like a step back and like looks over to the vets to see if they react in any way, aside from their their whispers. Um, well, they whisper amongst themselves and then they kind of just like go off to grab some uh, like food for the cat and water and everything. Um, but yeah, one of them sort of approaches you guys and she's like, is uh is this pretty cat your guys's um cat? Uh no actually. We just found it while we were traveling and we just didn't want to leave it alone in the forest. So we don't know who's who's the owner. Bless you. Oh gosh, sorry, I'm sneezing like crazy. It's the kitten for um uh, yeah. <laughs> she um, she makes a, like a strange smile and she's like, oh, I see. Well, um, we're happy to help you guys out in whatever ways we can. Um, but, uh, you know, after we get her cleaned up and everything, I think it's best if you guys uh, leave with her kittens. Oh, uh, you guys aren't able to take care of them? Oh, well, we can provide some, you know, we can clean her up and we can give you guys some food for her, you know, after her birth. But that's um, that's about all we can really do for you guys, unless you guys want to pay for like a medical checkup or anything. Oh, it's just we're, we're adventurers and I don't know if carrying around a cat and a bunch of kittens is the best idea. Ah, uh, well, I mean, I, I, there's a... Um, there's a lot of farmers here that could do with um, some... Uh, she kind of looks over at the kitten and she's like, Actually, I, I don't think we are, will be able to uh, hold these cats for you. Uh, Zephyr just kind of leans in and, and starts to whisper. It's like, is everything okay with the kittens? She um, clenches her teeth and she's like, Hey, well, you know, I never really seen this before, but you know, the the kids, they're like, this is not normal. She seems a little exasperated. And she's like, 
like I can I can feel something like dark magic around these cats, and I I don't think any of the farmers or anyone here would would take them in knowing that. Is there anyone here in the city who might know anything about these cats or about this type of magic? Well, m- maybe a scholar, but we don't have like we don't have scholars like they do in the capital. Not not too many of here in Exgar are too. We don't use magic too much, so you know there's not a lot of knowledge around that. But you know, just innately, like some of us know a little magic, but she's um. She's out of our jurisdiction for that. Zephyr kind of just holds the back of his head, but he nods and he's like, okay, I guess I understand. And so you guys do whatever you need to do and we'll, we'll wait over here. All right, she goes off and you guys all, you know, huddle up, I suppose. Um, you guys want to discuss what you guys are going to do with this cat? Yes. Breakfast. No. We are still definitely not eating them. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Did I you? may, yeah. Wayug's head starts shaking erratically. Oh. Uh, um. Yeah. Yes. Maybe the cats are getting to him. Uh, no, sorry, I just had. I I just was in contact. With my patron deity. Ah. Uh, Z- the, the, their name is, um, Zivalen, I believe? Yes. Yeah, something oh. like that. You say? <laughs> I just saw that I had, I have dark vision. <laughs> Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you literally said you didn't have dark vision. I thought I didn't, but I have it written down right here. Dark vision. <laughs> you, you were tuckered out from from holding the light, so I maybe would that's why. It, even though I could see farther without the light. <laughs> that I mean, that's that's just par for the course for Gordon. <laughs> oh wait. I'm putting up lights, but I can actually see. <laughs> um, you're just very yeah. kind to your other party members. <laughs> Anyways, Anyways back go to on. situation on hand. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I was in contact with, with, um, well, let's just let's just say an old friend. Um, I think the best course of action, right now is to bless the kittens. How would we do that? How would we do that? Good question. Oh. Hmm. How, how would we do that? <laughs> um, I mean, you're the monk. <laughs> Should I roll for something? How does blessing work in D&D? I, isn't that like a spell? There is a bless spell. <laughs> um, okay. But I mean, do you want like an actual blessing or just just doing doing a blessing? <laughs> um, you're gonna just dip these cats in holy water. <laughs> <laughs> Go visit the local church. I mean, there's the waterfall. A magical waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about any blessings, but there is the magic waterfall that Naya told us about. Oh, yes. Quote, unquote, magic waterfall? I mean, I, I trust Naya. She seemed credible. <laughs> okay. And it's not like we have any other options. Unless you guys are just cool with these cursed cats. <laughs> Who said they're cursed? Uh, the best. <laughs> like everybody. <laughs> like you don't know if they're like curse, curse though. I believe we're on to something. The the deity, <clears throat> my friend, my old friend told me once that the way through darkness 
is through thyself. The darkest comes the light. Seeing darkness, oh yes, that's what it is. Seeing into darkness is clarity. Knowing how to yield strength. Use your own light and return to the source of light. This is called practicing eternity. I think we should go to the waterfall. I mean, I, I don't know how any of that had to do with water, but yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> oh, it will all make sense. In due time. In due time. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Plus, we were headed there anyway, so might as well give it a try. We still need to finish this quest and still have a couple more days, but we should be. We shouldn't be dallying. <laughs> well, what about my key? Well, we have no leads for your key. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. And I put it back in my... Uh, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do you put it back? Zephyr's anyway. not interested. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, as you guys are discussing, the vets, you know, they cleaned up the cat. Um... She's eating very heartily at the food they gave her. And her kittens are nice and curled up against her. Oh, that's you. Zephyr just kneels down and he looks over at the cats and he hesitantly reaches out and pets the the mom cat first. Before like wavering his hand over to see if he has permission to pet the kittens. Um, when you pet her, she doesn't seem to mind. She's still lapping up her water. Right. But I see you. Okay. In case, I pick up... <laughs> I pick up the cats. All of them? How many are there? <laughs> There's three kittens and the mom. Hmm. Well, I don't trust Gordon with any of them. Well, as you are right. examining the cats, actually, one of the vets come over. And she hands you, uh, like, a basket. And she's like, Well, if you guys are taking the cats, I think it would be good to transport them in this. And it's like a, it's like a square-ish basket. Uh, the top is open, and it's got little straps like a backpack. Oh, okay. I mean, this will come in handy. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I, I assume it won't fit over Wayug's shell. Oh, yeah, that's... Um, I can carry it. Unless yeah, Wayug I, I holds it the other it. way. <laughs> I, I... I stop the, the person who gives us the basket, and I slip them five gold pieces. She, um... She takes them and smiles at you. Also, welcome in, readers. Thank you. <laughs> welcome in. <laughs> Hi, Lifey. We're playing D&D right now. Well, with our new basket, I just put it on the floor and I motioned for the cat to join and to, to go inside the basket. Um, noticing this, the mama cat, she gently picks up, you know, each cat by the scruff and kind of places them in. And then she herself kind of hops in. Okay. And then with all of them inside the basket, I carefully sling it over my shoulders. And then I look to Wayuk and Gordon and I'm like, should we get going? No in the words <laughs> <laughs> you can you can say it let's go <laughs> well, let's go <laughs> and we make our way out of the the vet clinic and i guess outside out of the city all right and then we'll end the session there with you guys with your newly acquired kittens and cat off into uh, going towards the waterfall where your original quest lies. Pachi, Pachi, Pachi. The Furious Eight? Question There we go. All right. You guys better have taken notes and remembered everything. <laughs> but... I most definitely did not. <laughs> But welcome Jack in, Daniel. welcome in, wifey, welcome in, raiders. Uh, sorry, you guys made it to the the last last few minutes of the um 
session, but welcome in. <laughs> I hope you had a good stream, my feet. You didn't miss much. Eventually, or essentially, we just found some cats, and they turned out to be cursed, and that is it. <laughs> <laughs> the cat wasn't cursed. The kittens were, I guess. Well, it's a tomato. Why are they cursed, though? I don't know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go cast Sacred Protection versus evil and good and see what happens. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna let you do that. <laughs> you a, a kitten explodes. <laughs> you, you can do it you can do that on yourself. <laughs> but the kittens are so um, simple. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, how I would describe uh, them. <laughs> uh, uh, I would use maybe the word like you? <laughs> So squishy. Um, the, the, no, let, let's stop there. Let's, let's, yeah, yeah. let's wrap it up. Let's, let's wrap it up. So let's fragile. wrap it up. Let, let's wrap it up. Okay, thank you guys for for playing today, and thank you everyone who came by to to, to to listen in. Um, um. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I think Jordan is the cursed one, not yeah. the yeah. <laughs> I thought it was supposed I to be lawful good. I thought it was supposed to be lawful good, Gordon. What's going on? What does lawful good have to do with kittens? Um, kittens food are, food. are good and holy. <laughs> that, that these shits are not so Amen holy. to that. Amen <laughs> to that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of the session. We will see you guys next week. Um, again, uh, my lovely players, we have uh, JD, we have Gally, and we have Ace. Please go check them out. I'm going to say goodbye to YouTube. Goodbye, YouTube people.